Well, hi, folks. Yep, it's Stein North. <laughs> and guess what? It's time for a Stein story. <laughs> this one is titled Two Fingers, Bowed Legs, and Nearly Deaf. This story is about my granddad. Old Docky. Get myself a little comfortable here for this story. <laughs> okay, now. Oh, I just had to take a quick look at my screen here. Yeah, everything looks good. Old Docky. That was his name. That was his legal name, Docky. Um, some people in our family insist that no, that wasn't his legal proper name. And well, I beg to differ because the people that don't agree with me on that didn't live with him for several years, didn't see him sign his checks, sign other legal documents as Docky. Um, they didn't see his driver's license, which was Docky. His legal name was Docky. Anyway, old Docky. There's a dozen sty stories that could be attached to old Docky. But this one is going to, I'm going to cover three incidents with him over the years way before I was ever born. Now, I believe, well, he was born in the late 1800s. Very late 1800s. He had a rough life, had a very rough life. One sty story I could tell about him is, is when he was um, about seven years old, how he ran away from where he was living and traveled with a bunch of um, local, well, they weren't that local, but they were from the area, um, Chippewa, native Chippewa tribal leaders. He ran away with them to go to where his estranged father was living. And that's a story in itself. And we'll tell that some other day. Now, with this one, I'm gonna just go right down the three of them. Two fingers, both legs, and nearly deaf. Okay, the two fingers. My granddad, he ran a, a lumber mill, had a timber operation going on, um, from my understanding, it was near Lake Mille Lacs in north central Minnesota. Well, it was a pretty large camp, and the in those days, the loggers lived right at camp. Um, there was no transportation to be driving back and forth to work. You lived where you worked. Well, he. He was, he, he ran his whole camp. He was involved with everything in his camp. Well, one morning he had one of his foremen come pounding on his cabin door and he says, Docky, the cook got drunk last night again, camp cook, and he doesn't have any breakfast going. Well, this is like four o'clock in the morning because those guys were hiking into the woods to start cutting at um, at least an hour before the sun rose. Well, so my granddad, he goes to the mess tent and he wakes up the old camp cook. And he says to the camp cook, he says, why isn't breakfast being fixed? And the camp cook said, well, I got up this morning and realized we don't have any wood for the 
cook stove, so I just went back to bed. Well, my granddad wasn't too cool with that, so he drug that old boy out of his rack and said, come on, we're going to cut some wood, we're going to split some wood, and we're going to get those stoves going, and you're going to fix breakfast for this crew. Well, they went out back of the mess tent, and here's a big pile of bucked up cordwood. All this stuff's probably about three to four inches in diameter. My granddad told the cook, he says, I'll set the wood on the chopping block. You hit it with the axe. All we got to do is split it once and it'll fit in the stove just fine. So here they are. My granddad's grabbing a piece of wood, sets it on the chopping block. The old cook splits it in half. Granddad grabs another one, sets it on the block, cook splits it in half. And they got this rhythm going on. Boom, 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 boom. Well, one time my grandfather grabbed a piece of wood, set it on the block, and the cook split it. Took two of my grandfather's fingers off, right up, right up to the hand. Both fingers. So there's this hatchet, they were using a hatchet to split this wood. There's this hatchet stuck in this piece of wood with these two fingers sticking out from under it. My granddad holds his hand up and this is what he's got. That's all he's got. <laughs> he grabs hold of it like this and he runs to their um, camp, basically camp medic, camp doctor. Well, back then most of them were veterinarians, <laughs> if you were lucky. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Well, he gets there and he shakes this old doc up. I guess he was just an old boy too. And he says, doc, he says, can't cook, just cut off two of my fingers. He says, what are we going to do? Doc says, I'll take care of that. Stitches the wounds shut. And then he cauterizes it with a hot, flat piece of iron. Psh. So my granddad spent the rest of his life with this claw. I tell you what, there was nothing he couldn't do with those three fingers. It was amazing. He could hold a nail and drive a nail. He could do anything with that hand that you could do if you had all five fingers, basically. One thing he could do that you didn't want him to do is say, hey kid, come here, and then have him get a hold of you with that. We called it the claw. Hey, don't get too close to Grandpa, he'll give you the claw. Well, he'd get a hold of your collarbone and squeeze. Those fingers became so strong because of the lack of the other two that, boy, if he got a hold of your collarbone and squeezed, you thought he was going to rip your shoulder right out of the socket. But there's where it's old two fingers. The next one, bowed legs. My granddad, this is absolutely no kidding. I can remember one time I was out in the garage with a buddy of mine. We were just young kids, little guys, you know. And my granddad was out there and he's kind of, you know, BSing with us and giving us a little bit of grief, you know, just to have some entertainment. Well, we had this ball that was a little smaller than a basketball. And we started, my buddy got behind my grandpa, and I'm in front of him, and we started bouncing the ball off the floor between his legs. The other kid would catch it. He'd bounce it on the floor between my granddad's legs and I'd catch it and back and forth, back and forth between my granddad's legs. That's how bowed his legs were. He looked like he was born straddling, straddling a 55 gallon fuel barrel. His legs were so bowed it was ridiculous. Well, how did they get bowed like that? Well, at his logging days, he was floating, him and his crew were floating rafts of logs across Lake Superior. 
and Lake or not Lake Superior, Lake Malax, and Lake Malax is a huge lake, huge, and it's shallow. So when the winds pick up, it gets rough. Oh my gosh, the waves get nasty. And it's because it's so shallow. Well, sure enough, the winds blew in. And those rafts started this number. All these huge, huge fir and white pine logs. My granddad said what happened was is a log he was standing on came off the crest of a wave and it started to roll. He jumped to another log, slipped, and he straddled that log. And he's riding it like a horse in these big waves. All of a sudden, two logs on either side of it go up in the air and they come down on both sides of that log that he's straddling hit him up in the hips, both those huge logs, hit him in the hips, and it broke his legs from his hips down to his knees. With the one leg, they figured three spots were broke, the other leg two. Well, they drug him off that log raft, they got him to shore, got him into that old dock, and that old doctor said, well, we can reset those bones. And when the old doctor was done, my granddad, I guess, was laid up for um, s several months. But when he healed up, his doggone legs were just bowed as can be. So there you go, bowed legs. Life of a woodsman. Okay, nearly deaf. I know this video is going for a bit, but you got to hear it. <laughs> you gotta hear about the death part. Okay, my granddad couldn't hear where the darn. I don't know how many times I'd say to him, Grandpa, come on, it's time to go home. And he'd, go, he'd yell at me, Look at me, boy, I'm bald. I don't need a comb. <laughs> That's the way it was. Why was he so deaf? It wasn't because he lost his hearing naturally. It was because of this. Working in the sawmill, steam-operated sawmill, my grandfather was a boilermaker and just an ace when it came to steam-operated equipment. Well, they had this huge steam engine running that mill. Well, those old mills had belts and pulleys everywhere, running everywhere. And they were running a huge popple log, poplar log, through the mill. And poplar, you have once you start making a cut in it, the girth, you have to keep that log moving because poplar will swell shut and it'll seize itself on the blade. So you just got to keep it moving. Well, the sawyer that was running the mill wasn't paying attention, and he let that this big poplar log seize up on the blade. Well, they're yelling for my granddad, and he could tell by the sound of the mill something bad just happened. So he was running over there, and they, they said, hey, you won't believe what he did. He went and got a big poplar log seized on that saw blade. My granddad said, well, everybody get the heck back, stay back, because the strength of that steam power sometimes when you put things in it would you'd engage that power into these belts and pulleys if it if you did it too quickly things would come apart and you could get yourself killed easily he jumped up on that log with a what they call a pv some of you may know what a pv is but it's just a big wooden pole with a spike and a hook on the end and he got underneath that saw blade with that peavy, and he's heaving back on it. And he's kind of bent over, and he's heaving back on that. And what he's trying to do is back that blade up, just back it up a little bit, get it. it there's no way you could manually get it to come totally free, but if you could back it up several inches, then 
they could fire the mill back up and there'd be enough to get that blade spinning and then they could finish that cut. So there he is and he's heaving back on that. And he turned and he looked at the mill operator and told him, don't engage this until I say okay. And the mill operator wasn't paying attention. All he, all he heard was okay. <laughs> Full power right to that saw blade. That saw blade started to turn and started kicking that log up with my grandfather right over the top of this saw blade that's um he said it was a big saw blade they were cutting they were cutting um timber that was over 40 inches so it was a big blade and he was afraid he was going to fall on it and just split himself in half so he stood up well above him were all these belts and pulleys that ran out to the planer where they would plane finish wood when he jumped up, he put his head right between two of those belts and two of the pulleys, and they grabbed his ears and ripped his ears off. Here, they did tear him completely away. They tore him off, and they were just hanging by the bottom skin on his shoulders. Right away, he just put his hands to his head and couple of crew members got him off to the old dock. And the old dock said, well, just like anything else, old doggy, I can fix that. Well, he stitched my grandpa's ears back on. Now, this is no kidding. All the years I knew my grandfather, his glasses, the bows of his glasses, there was, from one side to the other, there was at least a two-inch difference. One was two inches lower than the other. And that's because that old doc sewed his ears on crooked. Didn't get them where they belonged. My granddad said after several weeks of never even looking, just letting the doc take the dressing off and clean it up and put the dressing back on, after several weeks when the dressing could come off and stay off, he said he finally looked in the mirror and he said, oh, he was so mad. He was so mad. His ears were just totally off, and one was kind of tilted to the front. He said, at least I had ears. At least I had ears. But he couldn't hear where the darn after that. Everything he heard was kind of crooked, <laughs> just like his ears. Yeah. So there you are. There's my granddad. Heck of a woodsman. Smartest woodsman I ever met. And, boy, miss him dearly. I never did. I was just a young boy when he finally passed away. But, boy, I gleaned all I could out of him when I had the chance. And if he was alive today, I'd be doing the same because he was so full of information when it came to the great outdoors. Boy, you could do a whole YouTube channel on that old boy, Docky. But that's the sty story for today. I, I'm glad you all tagged along. I hope you enjoyed it. Two fingers, bowed legs, and nearly deaf. <laughs> hey, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Hit the like button. Please hit the like button. And I'm glad you're hearing this part of the video because I need view time. I really need view time. I've got lots of views. I've got over 2,000 subscribers but I'm lacking on actual view time. So the view time is important. And again, hey, I love having you guys tag along. This is Stye North. Catch me in my next Live at the Stye Shack. And until then, hey, you all have a nice day. Bye-bye.